So as you probably know by now, one of the bigger mysteries in the universe is the mystery of dark matter. With the mystery of course being exactly what it is. Is it some kind of a particle? Is it some kind of a phenomenon we don't understand? Is it some kind of a formula we have to rewrite? What exactly is it? And why does it produce so many effects around the universe? Because basically that's how we know dark matter is real. It produces so many unusual observational effects that cannot be explained otherwise. And one of the most common explanations today involves some kind of a mysterious particle that the scientists are trying to discover that potentially produces all of these extra gravitational effects. And if you want to find out why the scientists believe dark matter is real, check out one of the previous videos somewhere in the description. But today we're actually going to be focusing on something else. We're going to be focusing on the exciting research of the search for dark matter. Because basically, a lot of modern technologies are usually created through various unusual searches in various scientific fields where the scientists try to find something and then realize that all of these inventions they've just created can actually be used for a lot of other fields as well. Which is actually why dark matter research is so important. It's definitely going to lead to a lot of exciting technologies. And so the purpose of this video is to explore some of the upcoming research in search for dark matter or to basically take a look at some of the new techniques the scientists propose that we can actually use to look for these unusual phenomena or these unusual particles. In the process, helping us develop technologies even more. And let's actually start with one of the more unusual ways I've discovered so far. At least one scientific paper proposes that we can actually use DNA to detect dark matter. Or to potentially detect something else entirely, some other effect, that can actually lead to some major breakthroughs. And so here's what the scientists actually proposed a few months ago. This is from a paper you can find in the description below. They propose creating a miniature detector by suspending very long DNA strands as you see in this image. In this case, the actual DNA doesn't matter, it just has to be really long and has to be suspended in a very similar way to much larger strands in a neutrino detector such as IceCube located in Antarctica. So the principle here would be very similar, but in this case, by suspending the DNA from a gold metal sheet and by putting the strands in a very specific location, but also creating each DNA strand with a unique identification system, it becomes possible to track any kind of a disturbance within this detector when a particle passes through this and disturbs it, dislodging some of the strands. And so by slicing through some of these DNA strands, it will then deposit certain strands on the bottom, with these strands then amplified using various PCR techniques in order to determine which strands were affected. And because the strands would be very specific, it actually allows the scientists to then even create a kind of a 3D map showing a precise location where this particle very likely came from. Although naturally, this DNA would also be affected by a lot of other things. Cosmic rays, all sorts of radioactive decay, even neutrinos, will most likely damage the DNA and result in some kind of a detection. And so in this case, by actually doing this for an entire year, it becomes possible to determine if certain detections are, for example, due to the rotation of planet Earth around the Sun. And some of the previous papers have even suggested that in March we should expect a little bit more of dark matter particles because of how Earth and the Sun move around the galaxy. And so if the scientists do detect more detections during those periods of time, it might suggest that this detector is definitely working. Although in this case, the assumption is that there is going to be at least some effect when a dark matter particle passes through the DNA itself. Which already has another implication, of course. If dark matter is real, it might have also influenced the evolution on our planet by basically helping DNA evolve. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video and we'll discuss this in some of the future videos on this topic. Nevertheless, even if not dark matter, this is a pretty cool detector for a lot of other reasons. First of all, it would be extremely cheap to produce, it would also be really small, it would also be very power efficient, and more importantly, it could be used to detect a lot of stuff on the planet, including a lot of other mysterious particles that the scientists have been trying to discover for a very long time. So definitely a cool proposition. By the way, just as a side note, one of the most famous experiments today is the one behind me. It's known as Xenon. And it's actually one of the experiments that potentially detected something unusual a few years ago. The scientists are still not entirely sure what it found, but it's one of the reasons they actually keep going with the experiment and keep trying to rediscover whatever it is they found originally. But the video in the description explains this in a little bit more detail. Anyway, moving on to the next proposition. Atomic clocks. And specifically, a spacecraft-based atomic clocks that actually already exists out there because a lot of satellites use atomic clocks today, that the scientists think we can use to try to discover what happens very close to our Sun, specifically in the region between Mercury and the Sun itself. 
Now this region, if dark matter exists, and of course if it's some kind of a particle, would represent the location with the highest possible density of dark matter present in the solar system, mostly because most of it is probably going to approach closer to the sun and is probably going to be trapped in orbit much closer to the sun as well. And so the region between Mercury and the sun is very likely where we're going to be finding more of these particles, if they exist. And so by placing an atomic clock on a satellite and putting it in orbit very close to the sun, we might start observing discrepancies or oscillations in the measurement of time using this atomic clock. And the idea here is really simple. If dark matter particles exist, just like a lot of other mass in the universe, as they pass close to certain objects, they're going to induce certain gravitational effects, or potentially even induce certain effects on the various constants of nature, such as the iconic fine structure constant, which could affect the electromagnetic forces, and thus affect the measurements in the atomic clock as well. And that's because the atomic clock measures the frequency of photons emitted when atoms transition from one state to another. And so a certain type of a dark matter particle can actually change these effects, making these observations possible in certain locations of the solar system, such as close to the Sun or close to Mercury. But this type of emission does not have to be designed specifically to find dark matter. As a matter of fact, a lot of modern spaceships at some point will require atomic clocks for their own internal purposes, such as to measure time, to then determine distances and location in space. And so just by virtue of exploring the solar system in some of the future spacecrafts, we might actually be able to collect enough data to potentially discover something interesting somewhere in the solar system by looking at the discrepancies in the atomic clocks present in those spaceships. And by figuring out how to miniaturize these and make them much easier to transport, we might actually come closer to having these spacecrafts much sooner than we would have them otherwise. Okay, two down, a few more to go. Next one is also kind of intriguing. It actually uses technology that we use for something else. Meteor detectors. Specifically, detecting various asteroids or various meteorites that enter the atmosphere of our planet, producing quite a lot of plasma, which leaves behind a very interesting electromagnetic effect known as the ionization trail. And so this is how a lot of meteoroids that enter our planet are usually tracked from various sources. Which is exactly how the scientists then determine where they crashed, by basically tracing the tail. But at least in theory, certain types of dark matter can also leave behind these ionization trails, but obviously without the actual collision, without the actual rock. Although in this case, this would be dark matter that would be much more massive. A particle or even a chunk with a large mass equivalent to a typical rock. And so by using a very similar technique, and by looking for these ionic tails that are formed without an actual meteor, it might become possible to find certain anomalies that could not be explained otherwise. This would resemble a sudden influx of a lot of electromagnetic waves released by the radar as it bounces from all of these free electrons, suggesting that something else is going on here, and potentially implying that we found a very chunky dark matter particle. And since in this case the entire planet can be used as a very large particle detector, without any use of new technologies, at this point it really becomes just a matter of data processing and data collection. Something that in theory the scientists can even do today. They haven't yet, but it's definitely possible. So definitely a pretty cool proposition. Another proposition looks like this. By trapping an electron, it actually becomes possible to use it to track any kind of a particle that passes through the region of space where the electron is located. And in this case, by using a laser, it becomes even possible to detect the exact mass of this particle and to determine a lot of other properties. Although here, like in a lot of other cases, it's assumed that there is some kind of interaction between electromagnetic forces and dark matter, or that the dark matter particle is at least a little bit charged. Nevertheless, if not dark matter, it can also be used to detect something else. This hasn't been built yet, it's just a theory, but it's a pretty cool proposition. Trapping one electron in a very highly controlled environment can definitely allow the scientists to find something unique, invisible to us otherwise. And then the last proposition is from the paper you can find in the description. A slightly more complex proposition, using superconducting nanowire detector. In this case, by using a tungsten silicide superconducting nanowire, super super thin, only a few microns or even a few nanometers in thickness, can actually create what's known as a superconducting nanowire single photon detector, a technology that existed for approximately a couple of decades now. And these devices are extremely sensitive to very small amounts of energy, usually being able to detect even a single photon. Here is one of these devices from approximately 15 years ago. 
And the way that this works is really simple. The scientists take these superconducting wires that are super super thin and cool them down just above their limit. Or essentially they turn them into a superconductor, but just a little bit different from that superconducting temperature. If you warm it up just a little bit, it will suddenly lose its superconductivity and acquire electrical resistance. And so in this case, even a single photon of a certain energy will affect this and will switch off superconductivity, which can then be detected by measuring the electrical resistance and seeing the differences. And these devices are already actively used in various quantum computers because they're so accurate at detecting even a single photon of light. But by building an array of these, it becomes possible to actually keep track of an entire area where these particles could pass through, affecting the superconducting wires underneath. These nanowires, when fabricated, would look something like this. Really, really small, but extremely accurate and extremely precise. And so in this case, the scientists were able to even fabricate a prototype of this particular device and even give it its first test run. Although in this case, they were looking for another type of a dark matter particle, the hypothetical dark photon, which in theory could be found by these detectors relatively easily. But according to the scientists in this paper, having run this experiment for 180 hours, so far, they found no evidence of these dark photons existing. Although in this case, they were only looking at a very specific mass. By scaling up this experiment and making it larger and longer, it might lead to some discoveries in the future. But I guess more importantly, it might lead to new technologies used in a lot of different industries, specifically quantum industries. And so scaling this in size might eventually lead to even better quantum computers. Or it might in theory. At the moment, nobody really knows where any of this leads or if any of these are even going to be developed. And for all we know, maybe dark matter is not really a particle. With all this potentially remaining as a kind of a theory, as a kind of a suggestion and nothing else. But these are still really cool propositions and some of them are actually really intriguing. So maybe some of the scientists might be able to try this in the future. If not to find dark matter, maybe to discover something else we do not see otherwise. And this is why this type of research is actually really important. It's innovative, it makes these really cool propositions that might not work for what we're actually trying to find, but might instead work for something entirely different in some other industry that actually needs this type of stuff. Which is why I wanted to basically bring this to everyone's attention. Kind of interesting, kind of cool, super intriguing, but might lead to nothing. I guess only time will tell. On that note, check out the studies and the links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Check out other videos on dark matter in the description below. And support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.